Hello, my name is Tom McPoyle, and I am a professor in the physical therapy program at Regis University in Denver, Colorado. Since 1980, I've had the opportunity to treat a variety of foot and ankle disorders. I started working with individuals with insensate feet, but in the last 25 years have focused my practice on the evaluation and management of both athletes and non-athletes with various foot and ankle disorders, especially overuse disorders. Since finishing my PhD in 1987, I've also had the opportunity to publish over 100 refereed manuscripts. The intent of all those papers was to try to help further the body of knowledge that we have regarding both the evaluation and treatment of the foot and ankle. In 1995, my colleague Gary Hunt and I published a paper in which we presented the tissue stress model. The purpose of that tissue stress model was to try to provide the clinician with a different paradigm in which to treat the foot and ankle. And we based the tissue stress model on the load deformation curve. The tissue stress model is based on the load deformation curve. And as you can see in this graph, there are two ranges, an elastic range, which represents the normal give and take of soft tissues and muscle tissues as we undergo typical activities, such as running and walking. And then you can also see that we have a plastic range. If the tissues enter into the plastic range, of course, that is going to mean permanent deformation of the tissues, like when you suffer an ankle sprain. You'll notice that the zone separating the elastic range and the plastic range is referred to as the microfailure zone. If we cannot keep the tissues as they're undergoing stress or being uh, moved during different activities, if we cannot keep those tissues within the elastic range and they begin to enter into the microfailure zone, what will now happen is an increase in not only tissue deformation but also stress. The purpose of using the load deformation curve to explain the tissue stress model is to provide the understanding that when we have a patient who has increased stress to soft tissues and muscle related tissues, one of the purposes of our orthotic device as part of the comprehensive management program is to control the amount of deformation that the tissues are entering to try to keep them from going into this microfailure zone. So if we pull over this model, here again, as the person is undergoing a certain amount of pronation, we know that each person has to undergo a certain amount of pronation for normal movement. Our interest as clinicians is trying to determine when do we have excessive pronation or too much pronation. It's that excessive pronation that now causes the individual to enter into the microfailure zone with regards to tissue stress and deformation, which leads to symptoms. It makes sense then, the purpose of our orthotic device is to try to control how much movement the foot goes into pronation in an attempt to control the stress and deformation that are placed on the tissues. In an attempt to prevent movement into the microfailure zone and control the amount of stress and deformation to allow the tissues to not only rest but also heal, for the last 30 years I've used an approach that I term a dual density orthotic model. And the concept of dual density is to use two different densities of material, a top cover which has some compressibility to permit normal pronation, which is required for activity to occur. And as you can see, the blue base shell material to block excessive pronation and control the amount of tissue stress and deformation. In other words, prevent the tissues from moving into the microfailure zone. For the last 15 years, I've been able to accomplish this dual density approach by utilizing prefabricated components. 
While this has been an extremely successful orthotic device, it requires not only bonding, but also an extensive amount of grinding, which makes this extremely impractical for most clinicians. In 2010, Phil Vasily visited me in Denver, Colorado, and after much discussion, we both felt that we could co-develop an orthotic device that could mimic the dual density approach, but at the same time, make it very clinician friendly. And needless to say, the Vasily McPoyle Tissue Stress Relief Orthosis has exceeded my expectations. Having had the opportunity to use this on both athletes and non-athletes, the success of the device has been excellent. We know the current research tells us that to control motion as well as to provide maximum shock attenuation, an orthotic should provide both molding and posting. And the advantage of the Vasily Tissue Stress Relief Orthosis is that we can heat mold the device as well as, when necessary, provide appropriate posting either in the rear foot or in the forefoot. In closing, I just want to say how excited and proud I am to be part of the Vasily Think Tank as well as the development of the Vasily McPoyle Tissue Stress Relief Orthotic. Thank you.